In this story, the main character had a belief that he was a true magician. This belief was rooted in his childhood as his father had randomly told him that he came from a long line of magicians. As a young child, the protagonist took this information seriously and wholeheartedly believed it. That belief was further strengthened when he watched a magic show and saw a magician being stabbed but miraculously, he appeared to be fine. At that time, he didn't know that such performances were just tricks and illusions. He didn't have a good father figure and he became uselessly addicted to magic. He knew magic wasn't real but deep inside he desired its existence. He remembered the time when he was 17. He was trying to persuade Yoi Chan to not leave the laboratory as they needed her to help to stop the Black Magic Laboratory from being demolished. She told him that she didn't want to spend her time with such a strange group and he didn't have to walk her home. She wondered whether he had some sort of crush on her. But he noticed that she was about to walk through a red light and concerned for her safety he was trying to warn her. But before he could reach her, a truck came barreling down the road. In that moment of courage and selflessness, he pushed Yui Chan out of the way and ended up standing directly in the path of an oncoming truck. After a while, he found himself in a bewildering situation. He wondered whether he was in the hospital, or was he saved. His mind was dim but he certainly had consciousness. After wondering over such worthless thoughts, he opened his eyes and saw a mysterious man who didn't appear to be Japanese and his language was mysterious as well. He was certain those people were from foreign countries and he tried to communicate with them using hand gestures as words wouldn't properly come out of his mouth. It wasn't just that when he had a look at his own hands, they were small as if they were the hands of a baby. He instinctively sensed it perhaps he had been reborn as a baby. He got terrified and cried out loud. The woman sitting next to him moved her hands up and down while holding him up as if to calm him down. The man and woman looked at him with happy expressions and they were looking at him just like a parent look at their child. After two years, he got used to his life as a member of the Marin clan's member. His parents named him as Abel Belek. He was a smart kid as he was able to eat on his own at two years of age. Abel's parents were proud of him and they expected that his younger sister who was about to be born, to be as smart as Abel. His parents offered their prayers to the ancestor of the Marin clan as red eyes and white hair were the characteristics of the Marin clan. Abel never heard of that continent before and he was surprised that electrical appliances were nowhere to be found. Abel knew he was reincarnated on another planet. Abel's life as a member of the Marin clan began when he was four years of age. His hobby was to make totems. Totems were magical items that were indispensable to the Marin clan. Totems were also considered as guardian deities in ceremonies. Abel heard the sound ouch. Her mother accidentally cut her finger in the kitchen. He ran immediately to check on her. But she was fine as it was just a small cut. Still, her husband asked her to let him see the wound. Abel didn't expect his father to use a magic spell to heal her mother. Zeal who was Abel's father used healing magic on her mother. Abel was shocked to know about the fact that magic was common in that world. People around could easily create fire and water using magic. He was convinced his life wasn't completely wasted at all. He was glad that he died and was reborn on a planet where he could use magic. Since then, he has so dedicated to making totem dolls but her younger sister who was two years old at that time, named Gizzle was bothering him. Abel asked her to play by herself as he was busy but his dad zeal told him to play with his sister and he didn't need to make totem dolls yet. Abel wasn't happy with that but he didn't have a choice other than obeying his dad. The magic was real and pretty much common in that world and Abel was certain about that place not being Earth. The ideal training for the skills required to use magic was making totem dolls because in that world spirits dwelled in natural objects, and the air and magic were phenomena that could be activated through the instructions given to the spirits. If they had to perform a magic spell, one must first imagine the spell they wish to invoke. The spell was light characters magic which allowed the user to draw letters and pictures in the air with a magic line. If they had to create magic circles one must have to focus on the spirits that exist within the air and then use their spell. Without the spell and magic circles, magic couldn't be performed. Totem creation was the most efficient way to refine the requirements for the magic as the wood that was used in making totems had magic powers in them. The members of the Marin clan had a special magic tool which was a wood carving knife, and it could cut trees without any strength. The members of Marin clan were regarded as the clan of magic users and they were also regarded as a secret weapon of war. Marin clan dwelled among the mysterious mountains, where the trees were no ordinary foliage but imbued with magical powers. Children born in the Marin clan had exceptional magic knowledge. Unfortunately, the magic in the Marin clan dwindled as the war occurred over a hundred years ago, 
and it was a consequence of peace. Even though Abel was reincarnated into the magic world still he didn't seem to be satisfied as his dad wasn't helping him in learning magic at all rather he was making cute bows for him to hunt. Another three years passed and Abel was seven years old. Zeal was pissed off because of the hobby of Abel making totem dolls. He wondered what they were going to do as there wasn't any place left in their house because of totem dolls. Even their neighbors wondered whether Zeal's son was a totem maniac or what. Abel's mother supported Abel as even though he was a child, he was trying his best to follow Marin's traditions. Zeal was looking for Abel as he wanted to put some sense into him but Abel was practicing in the woods to refine his magic abilities. Although he was learning magic independently from the books, he was able to draw light characters on his own by the age of just seven. Abel asked his sister to keep their training a secret among them as if the word goes out it could create problems for them. Abel wasn't satisfied with his magic abilities yet because he knew he had potential but needed someone who could teach him. He wondered if there was a magic user from the war days and by then he might be considered a sage. He knew a certain man in a village who could help him refine his magic abilities. He headed straight to the chieftain house and chieftain was claimed to be 150 years old. There were rumors that he used magic to maintain his youthful appearance and no one knew how old was he exactly. Abel approached Chieftain as he wanted to be his apprentice and learn magic from him. He warned Abel that even though he was a kid, he would not go easy on him as his teachings were very strict. The Chieftain wanted to make sure how serious Abel was. He asked him to come again the next day. Abel met Phyro, outside of Chieftain's home and Phyro was granddaughter of Chieftain. Phyro figured her grandfather was pleased by Abel's request as people weren't practicing magic lately, and he was glad that his old knowledge would be useful. Abel thanked Phyro as he heard that Phyro stood up for him on a particular instance, but Phyro said she didn't save him on purpose and wished him luck so that he would not let her grandfather down. Thus, the day eventually came when the chieftain taught Abel about magic. After learning how to properly create magic circles, Abel's magic improved drastically. Abel trained rigorously for days and eventually, he fell sick because of fatigue. His parents were worried about him but Abel was excited as he got exactly what he wanted in his previous life. Abel was having problems with his family as they would bother him while studying. No matter how much time did he spend learning magic it still wasn't enough. After the passage of half a year, there was no doubt that Abel had significantly leveled up. The chieftain asked him to show the result of the rigorous training that he had been doing for the past few months. He efficiently used light characters and controlled two totems at the same time. That was training to manipulate the totems with magic and it was important to put magic circles on them in advance. Totem manipulation was the basic of all magic and Abel had to do that every morning before breakfast. Abel went a step further and put a rotatory motion on totems. Chieftain was impressed after seeing the growth of Abel as he was not only levitating those totem dolls but also rotating them. Abel was yet to reveal his true powers to the chieftain. He created a giant wind sphere and threw it towards totem dolls, but totem dolls dodged that attack and the wind sphere hit the tree behind the dolls, which resulted in destroying it completely. Abel apologized as he messed up with the power adjustments. The chieftain was shocked after witnessing how Abel created a massive wind sphere. The chieftain asked if that wasn't an action set in advance and from where he learned action without command. Abel replied he figured it out by himself when he was trying various sorts of things and somehow it worked for him. The chieftain asked whether he completed the magic circle by himself. Abel said since his master was too busy in the preparation for the festival he managed to learn that on his own. Although it took him a while after some trials and corrections and the errors he managed to pull that off. Chieftain was overwhelmed after knowing that. He cried and said he could die in peace now as Abel was the first student that completed his training and there was nothing more that Abel could learn from him. Abel and Gizel were extremely ecstatic after knowing that Abel completed his training. Chieftain was amazed how was he able to manipulate magic power which was capable of creating wind pressure at such a small age and that too with advanced handling of totem dolls. Abel wasn't satisfied and he wanted to learn more sophisticated magic tricks from his master. Chieftain suggested that it would be better if he borrowed magic from the library and learned from it rather than him. Abel borrowed loads of books and totems from the chieftain so that he could practice on his own. Chieftain wondered how many totems he needed as he was taking loads of them. Abel put the books on totems and said he would need to take around three round trips for all the books. After that Abel and Gizel headed towards their home with loads of books and totems. Abel was so enthusiastic about everything as he loved that place. Abel prepared rigorously to learn and enhance his magical abilities from the books that he borrowed from the chieftain. He was using a special nutrition drink that recovered 1 million HP, and he also used a wooden wand that could be used to shorten the spell casting. 
His rigorous routine continued for years and eventually, he completed his training when he turned 13. Gizel who supported him throughout his training was extremely happy for Abel when he completed his training. They went to collect certain data on citizens of the Marin clan. Abel figured that the average magical power in adulthood was around 20. Gizel wondered what kind of magic was his brother using. Abel said it was a status display and he could easily check the status of any individual around him. Abel always wanted to have an RPG element. Since the day he got reincarnated into a magical world, he was always looking forward to those abilities. That gave him a sensation of a main character in the game. Gizel asked Abel to look at her abilities and when Abel checked the status of her sister he was amazed as she had magical power of 37, which was greater than an average adult. He suggested her, if she trained hard, she would have having brighter future. Abel remembered that his father started to use magical circles when he was 20 years of age and Abel believed it would always be better to start using magic at a younger age. He knew the present Marin clan had a low consciousness for magic and it was such a disappointment. Gizel wondered how much magic power did Abel have. Abel had a magical power of around 865 which was a lot higher than an average individual. Abel wasn't surprised at all as he practiced hard for that but he wondered where would he stand in comparison to his master chieftain. Abel observed that he could also check the physical powers of any individual, and he felt depressed after knowing that his little sister Gizel had four times greater physical powers than him. Abel noticed two kids were staring at Gizel while she was picking flowers. He had an intuition that he could be bad news for Gizel but when the kids noticed that Abel was also staring at them, then they ran away as fast as they could. Abel was feeling sad, as he didn't have any friends in his previous life as well when he was a magical otaku, and coming to think of it, he didn't have any friends in the magical world either. It was so depressing for him, but all of a sudden he heard the voice of Fyro who was calling him from behind. She asked him if there was a rumor about Balek's son using suspicious magic out there in the woods and what was he doing there. Abel was overwhelmed as he didn't have any sort of communication with anyone apart from his family in a while. He drew his wand to check the status of Fyro, but she mistook it as a form of attack. She screamed in fear and asked him to stop whatever he was doing. Abel calmed her down while saying she didn't have to worry about anything as it would not hurt her in any way. Fyro had magical and physical powers of 19 and 20. She was the only descendant of his master chieftain and her magical powers were the same as about an average adult but just then Abel was shocked after knowing that Fyro's strength was 10 times greater than his strength. If he had a fist fight with any of the girls there, he would lose that fight. He called Fyro with respect and asked to excuse them as his father would get worried if they didn't reach home on time. Fyro wondered how he suddenly got scared and started using honorifics. He asked Fyro to give his best regards to her grandfather and left for the home. Abel's father was frustrated and gave a lecture to him because he took Gizel outside with him in the late hours. Zeal was worried about their safety as it could be dangerous for the kids. Gizel defended her brother as it was she who followed Abel outside and asked her dad to not get angry with her elder brother. Zeal didn't care even if he was the disciple of the chieftain. He was furious as Abel never helped in house household and rather than that he only played around with his magical items. Gizel interfered and said Abel used totems to help his father in the fieldwork. Zeal changed the subject and said he was the only one at his age who didn't hunt yet and at this rate, he wouldn't be a good head of the house. Gizel suggested Abel to hunt with his magic to which he agreed. The next day Abel went hunting with his dad and there he met with the members of the Ardi family. He met with Galia and Shibai and thanked them for having him. Abel said he would do his best in the hunt. Abel had seen the Arty family before, but it was his first time speaking with them. Abel wanted to go to hunting to improve his physical strength, but that wasn't the only reason. He was worried for his sister. That morning, Zeal was happy as his son was finally going on a hunt with him but at the same time Gizel was worried about her brother's safety. Gizel would be sad if her brother would not return safely. Abel assured her that he would be back as soon as possible. He was grateful that his sister admired him a lot. Abel knew in the Marin clan that once the individual reaches the age of 16, they are considered to be ready for marriage. Even his mom and dad met during the same time duration. Leaving that aside he knew Gizel didn't have any friends because she always stood by his side. That's why he chose to go hunting because he wouldn't be by her side, allowing her to make new friends. To practice magic Abel needed focus which resulted in him being secluded from others. He sobbed as he remained the same in both of his lives. Abel decided to make new friends of his age and he raised his hand for a handshake with Shibai. Shibai refused to shake hands with Abel which embarrassed him a little. Zeal told Abel that he was forbidden to use magic and rather than that he had to use archery or his body to hunt. 
Abel believed it would be better to use his magical abilities in the hunt but he wanted to improve his physical powers, so using archery and his body wasn't a bad idea either. With great enthusiasm, Abel said he would try his best while hunting. Things didn't go as Alan expected them to go as he was having a hard time catching his breath that too within an hour. He asked his father to go back home but he disagreed and scolded him back. He decided to give up on his strength stat as the magic oriented he wasn't suited for that. He was so tired that he couldn't walk any further. Shibai mocked him as he believed Abel was good for nothing. He deliberately said that out loud so that Abel could hear it. Dahlia noticed a shimu parrot which was rumored to be quite delicious. Shibai showed enthusiasm and said he would be the one who would catch the parrot. Shibai put an arrow in his bow and shot towards the bird but his aim wasn't that good as he missed the target. Galia drew his knife out to take down the bird but Abel believed the bird would be good material for biotype magic. Abel also experienced a biological magic on a rat when he was nine years old and that mouse resided in the Belex family. Galia was about to cut down the bird with his knife when Abel used a sleeping spell on the bird to put him down to sleep. Galia was amazed as he couldn't figure out what happened to the bird. Abel clarified that he used a sleeping spell on the bird as his master taught him that magic was more efficient on those who were not resistant to it. He decided to keep that bird as his pet. Galia wondered how he used magic without a tool. Galia believed Abel didn't need to learn archery if he was that proficient in magic. Abel's father scolded him as he strictly warned him to not use any magic. Abel apologized and asked if he could keep the bird as his pet. Suddenly they felt strong tremors and they wondered what was it all about. They were puzzled whether it was an earthquake. They figured that was the sound of footsteps. Alia asked them to leave as fast as they could and if they didn't return then they must report that to the chief. Shibai wasn't willing to leave his father behind. Galia scolded him as they didn't have much time left and at that exact moment, there appeared a great bear monster. The monster roared and stared right into their eyes. Shibai made a shot from his bow but the bear monster deflected that arrow with his eyelid. The monster had such a tight fur that an arrow couldn't penetrate through it. Abel stepped in to save Shibai and cast his sleeping spell on the monster. Abel believed the monster would fall asleep after being hit by the spell just like the parrot and he let his guard down. He was mistaken as the spell didn't work on the monster and the monster was about to hit him brutally when Abel's father jumped in and pushed him out of his attack range. Zeal took that attack on him which resulted in a serious injury. His torso was torn apart and he was coughing blood. Abel blamed him for that accident as he was careless and he let his guard down. When he approached his dad, he saw there was a hole in his father's stomach and Abel only knew recovery magic. Zeal said he was leaving Gizel and his mother to him and he had to take better care of them. Abel's eyes dwelled up but he didn't give up and used recovery magic on his father's wound. Zeal eventually admired his son. He said he was a smart kid and he might have not learned many things from him but finally, he was able to do something father-like for his son. Abel had a flashback from his previous life regarding how he lost his father at that time as well. Galia was still fighting with the monster. He used a fire magic ball and hit the bear with his might but that attack didn't even graze the monster. Galia felt miserable in front of the monster because the bear was just toying with him. Abel stood up to fight the monster. He used a light character to cast a spell. He analyzed about strengths and weaknesses of the bear. Since the bear had such thick fur, so he was certain that the monster had never taken damage up to that point. Abel just wanted the monster to feel pain even if it was little. After analyzing, Abel used Wind Blade Edge, which created air currents of high pressure near his surroundings. Alib partially adjusted the magic circle and poured all his magic power into that attack. Abel decided to use all his strength to take down the monster. Abel, standing face to face with the formidable king of the forest wild bear, felt a surge of hope as he fervently wished for his magic to work in this critical moment of life and death. His heart racing, he desperately hoped that even a minor injury to the bear would create an opportunity for everyone to escape to safety. Abel closed his eyes and wished for the best, gathering all his magic and asking the bear to just back off. He cast the magic, there was fog all around when the fog cleared he saw his magic finally worked. The bear lay down on the floor, sleeping and looking lifeless. Abel had defeated the king of the forest bear with his magic. Abel had thought that all he had to do was make the bear run away but this was unexpected. He assumed that if his sleep spell was that strong he didn't have to practice it any further. And now that he was able to handle the king boar, his spell magic would work on anyone. Abel went rushing towards his father. He didn't have any time to be spacing out. His father and Galeasan were deeply injured. Abel laid his father and Galeasan on the ground and initiated treatment. Initially, he utilized restorative magic to replenish their life force, followed by addressing their bleeding. 
Shibai stood behind him, holding a piece of red meat from the greater bear. Abel asked him to cut it into smaller pieces for his feasibility. Shibai asked about his father's condition. He was worried as Shibai had no idea about what was going on around him and what was Abel planning to do. And Abel replied that Galia-san would wake up soon and was now stable. Galia-san had no external injuries and Abel had cast life enforcing magic on him. The primary concern remained Abel's father's critical condition. Shibai who handed over the red meat asked Abel if was it fine to use bear's meat. Abel didn't have an accurate reply. He had to work with it. He constructed a magic circle to attempt it. Abel used adaptation to make the bear meat act as human flesh. Merging a human with the meat of a magical creature was essentially creating a chimera. It was considered legal as a medical procedure but in some cities, it was considered illegal magic. It was Abel's first time doing biological magic with a human. There were lots of risks, but right now they both didn't have the time to think about that. Abel had to do it. He started the magical process by placing the meat over his father's wound. He infused it with magic, gradually blending it with his body. The process, though initially uncertain, showed promising results as his father's complexion improved. Exhausted, both physically and magically drained, Abel collapsed, relieved that the ordeal was over. However, Abel remained vigilant for any potential after effect. He had to discuss this event with the chief later on. Abel did not want to believe that there were monsters bigger than that and that staying in that forest for a long time could be dangerous. Abel asked Shaibi to help him make modems so that they could carry their bodies using magic. Shaibi rushed to help Abel. While returning Shaibi expressed remorse for his earlier rudeness. Abel waved off the idea of holding grudges, realizing that there was no need for such animosity as Shibai had helped him and if it wasn't for Shiny, Abel would have no energy to make items. As he scratched his head sheepishly, Shaibi confessed that he had initially seen Abel San as a potential romantic rival. But the girls Abel the eternal shut in person knew were just Fyro and Gizzle. Abel thought Shibai was speaking about Fyro and tried to clarify it but before that Shibai confronted that Gizzle was an unreachable flower. Abel understood now that it was not about Firu but rather his sister Gizzle. Shibai questioned why Abel chose Gizzle as his lover. Abel thought that the Marin clan only had a few last names so Shibai must have seen Abel and Gizzle together all the time around and misunderstood the situation. When Abel thought about it, he was actually with Gizzle all the time. Even when they were out they would go out together, it made sense to him too. Abel explained to Shibai that he and Gizzle were siblings and there was nothing like what Shibai was thinking. It was just that they both got along too well as siblings. Hope had been raised in Shibai's heart, so he directly asked Abel if he could call Abel's brother-in-law to see the potential future relationship. Abel didn't approve of Shibai's idea. Everyone thanked Abel and Shibai for their help. When they arrived back home, Gizzle was fear old with concern for Abel. As soon as she caught sight of him, she rushed over, arms outstretched, tears streaming down her face. Meanwhile, Shibai observed the scene with a skeptical look on his face, silently conveying his disapproval to Abel. It was at that moment that Abel realized he should stick to what he knew best and not for some random hunt. He preferred his magic over the strength, and his magic would compensate for the lack of strength. After all, delving into the world of magic research from the comfort of home was where he found the most joy. Two years had swiftly passed, and now Abel found himself at 15 years old, with only two years left to become the same age he was in his previous life. Reflecting on the passage of time, Abel wondered about the members of the Black Magic Research Division in his previous life. Meanwhile, Abel remarked about his junior icon. Abel thought Iken would be still feeling guilty after that incident, and he hoped that Iken would stop feeling guilty as Abel gave his best second chance at life. Abel thought that the day was perfect. Gizzle, who was now 13 years old, came searching for him. Lately Abel had started a gardening project. Reflecting on his own experience from a week ago, Abel recalled when he imitated his father and later regretted it, understanding the leaves were not for play. Abel had tried to grow it but couldn't grow the totem Tresetta. Gizzle wondered why he had to grow it. Abel was growing leaves because he had to smoke leaves in his coming-of-age ceremony. Despite his reluctance, he knew he would have to partake in smoking as part of a coming-of-age ceremony at 16, a tradition enforced by his father. Abel couldn't get used to the taste and his father had told him to get used to the taste before. The leaves were used in ceremonies. It was the Marin clan's favorite and they were just tobacco leaves. Abel had found out that the taste changed depending on the way he grew it so Abel thought of growing some leaves himself. Gizzle wished him luck for his harvest. It was time for food for the totem which he had named Mr. Mountain. Gizzle asked why he named it Mountain San in the end. He named the tobacco Mountain San, after a nostalgic figure from his past, 
who was sleek and had helped him create the Black Magic Research Club. Thinking about it Abel had tears in his eyes creating confusion for those around him. Gizzle started getting worried about her brother. In his previous life, Mr. Mountain had created a place for him in the school, and his name would be dear to him for the rest of his life. While he was reminiscing his past, a few boys came searching for him. When Abel asked who they might be, the leader mocked telling him that the rumors were true about Abel. He surely was a shut in who did not know about the outside world. The leader was Noswell who called himself the great Noswell Carklow. Abel fought him to be a pain and that keeping relationships was too much of a hassle now and had to tackle with such people. Noswell who had come to pick a fight with Abel said that rumors had that the chief's disciple was growing a totem and Carklow had come to see it and maybe even offer some advice. Abel thought it was generous of Narklow to come and visit him. Abel guessed that rumors that said everyone would shut them down if someone began to cultivate leaves were true. They would ask what the growing totem leaves for. Marin clan didn't have any currency and in a village where bartering and trading goods are normal, the leaves had become a convenient substitute for money. The Carlo house effectively monopolized leaf cultivation and distribution. Thus the Carlco house had sent underlings to check Abel and his doings. Abel though appreciated him for taking trouble with this visit but assured him that Abel was growing it just out of curiosity so it was not a big deal. Noswell saw that there was only one tree. He had come to Abel because he had thought that the production of totem trees could be a threat to his father's business, depending on the situation. But there was nothing to be worried about, he thought he could even make a profit out of it. Noswell was targeting Gazel. He suddenly called out Gazel and asked her to be his wife. Hearing this the underlings started to panic, asking Noswell to apologize for what he said. They told Noswell that Abel was not the guy they would want to pick on due to things they heard. Noswell thought himself to be the most strongest and powerful person in that village. Gizel was afraid of them so she hid behind Abel, but Abel was wondering what were they saying. Rumor had it that if anyone upsets Abel then he would mutate them into a chimera or even into a totem. Abel himself heard this rumor for the first time. Noswell didn't believe those stupid stories as they were absurd to him. The underlings explained that Abel had totems that could talk and he also had killed a great bear with just true magic. Abel had himself invented an alarm clock totem in which a recorded voice sounds at set times. Noswell couldn't believe the extent his underlings were exaggerating things besides all that he believed he too had enough ability and magical skills to kill a great bear. Abel started thinking that whatever Noswell said was true, the bobbed haircut man's magic was so strong he couldn't believe it as he thought that he was the only one in that era who was interested in magic arts. Abel's eyes lighted up with joy, there were so many things he wanted to talk about with him now. Abel thought he had found a new friend. Noswell started feeling irritated with the situation and started reacting impulsively to situation. He was the eldest heir to the Carklo family and Abel had no intention of surrendering Gizzle to Noswell but Abel had finally found someone civil in that situation and tried to be civil. Abel took the initiative to introduce himself to Noswell rather than Gizzle as she was shy. Carklo family has been cultivating leaves for a long time so Abel was assuming he was an expert at making totems. Abel was working on an arrangement for a built-in magic circle, based on the writings of Kalba Fuller, but lately, he found Habus's theory interesting as well. Abel started bombarding Noswell with several questions. He was curious about everything from totems to paints. Noswell was eerie by the situation and pushed Abel away. Gizel ran towards Abel whose hand fallen hard and was trying to take sand out from his mouth. Just as Noswell thought the rumor was all a lie, Abel was just a pathetic shut-in. Noswell went toward the totem that Abel was growing and told him that he was doing it in the wrong way, and that the Carlco family would never overlook a mistake like that. Abel had followed the exact procedure that the research told him but now he was stunned as to what was wrong. Noswell told him that he would show him but upon going near to the modem, with his magical powers he called upon the blade of wind and chopped Abel's growing modem into pieces. Abel's face grew dark, realizing what Noswell had done. He had just cut Abel's Mr. Mountain into pieces, seeing this the underlings ran away. Abel was ready for a counterattack. If that was how it was going to be then he would rather do it thoroughly. In the East Forest, Abel had called Shibby to help him. Shibby called him mean as his Abel had suddenly called him to carve items even when Gizzle had already gone home. Abel wouldn't make Gizzle stay with him in the forest for that long, so he told him to stop talking nonsense and continue the work. Shibby asked the reason why was he trying to put Karklo's house out of business in the first place. The main reason for Abel was to avenge Mr. Mountain because it would benefit the whole country. Shibby wondered who Mr. Mountain was, but he didn't know why Abel considered the leaves so valuable. Shibby always thought it was because today's leaves were hard to cultivate. Abel said that it wasn't because the leaves were hard to cultivate but rather because Carclo's house regulates how much they circulate in the mark. 
It wasn't hard to cultivate if they could stabilize the magic supply. Leaves were also made by Rietta's house but it seemed that they were now just another puppet of Carclo's house. There was t any competition until then but now because Carclo house has controlled anyone capable of supplying power. Shibi did not know of any of the information. Abel had overheard it when the chief was grumbling about it earlier that day. The magic orc was a mineral that held magical power and was used as an ingredient in magic tools. Chief was promoting magic orc to become the village currency and the reasoning behind it is because it improved daily life. But the leaves disappear once they have been used. Carclo's house would be in trouble if the value of the leaves dropped so naturally they dislike the idea. There seemed like hostilities between the chief and Carclo's house because of that but Carclo had a lot of influence in the village, so even the village chief could not force them into bad hands. Shibi had heard that the two Carlco house and chief had bad relations, but Shibi did not know that it was for a reason like that. That was why Abel thought of avoiding Carclo House's political power in a way that doesn't affect Chief that is by mass producing high quality leaves. Foodle was the highest quality material used to make totems. To make all the leaves Abel needs at once, Abel planned to turn the forest trees into totems as they were and drop the price resulting in a difference between Carlos's product and Abel's product. Abel would force the value of Carclo leaves to crash through the floor but Abel when he reconsidered his ideas knew that doing a task of that scale wouldn't be possible with just two of them. If the plan failed then Gizzle may or may not be forced to marry into the Carclo house, Abel continued. He knew that Gizzle's marriage would trigger Shibi into working. Shibi was now panicking he didn't know what Abel meant and asked him to explain. It appeared that Gizzle had caught Noswell's fancy and that plan that they had hatched when this war concluded someone was going down. The words Abel spoke held a poetic beauty in Shibi's heart which made him feel the motivation to complete the task. Shibi was going to make as many totems as he could and he would do it together with his soon brother-in-law, Shabby remarked. Abel was irritated with Shibi calling him brother-in-law as he had no right to do so. Three days later, in the thicket facing the eastern forest, Noswell and his underlings were prying on Noswell and Shibi who were busy cultivating totems. The underlings knew that Abel would get genuinely angry and were scared of Abel and his magical power. The other underling saw a totem that wasn't the same as the one Noswell cut down, it was rather thicker and more sturdy. Noswell sighed. He knew Abel had planned to attack the Carclo family with the totems. Noswell started laughing sarcastically calling both of his underlings idiots. He called the totems Scarecrow. When Noswell looked deeper, the ones inside were the totems for gathering leaves, they were not going to attack anybody. Looking back at it Noswell thought that Abel was making serious attempts at cultivating leaves now and thought only a fool would do so. It was pointless trying to raise something that scale. Even if they tried they needed 20 men who each had a substantial amount of magic power. Even if that totem maniac, Abel, tried his hardest, the totem leaves would either fall told Noswell to his underlings. The two other boys warned him not to disregard Abel because his magic was so strong that even the chief acknowledged his superiority. Noswell started disrespecting the chief calling him a D-man who's lived a little longer than usual. However, Noswell considered the possibility of some sort of scheme between a teacher and a student and to be cautious Noswell asked his underlings to stake out the chief's house and not let Abel request the chief for magic support. But Noswell had misread Abel. Two years ago when Abel defeated the king of the forest the great bear since that time the one named Abel continued to study magic arts without rest and could easily supply a steady stream of magic power up to around 50 growing totems could easily achieve something of that scale and so two weeks later Abel and Shibi did enjoy an easy victory. At first, even Shibi was wondering whether they could pull off something of this stage. He also expected Noswell to interfere. But despite that bad feeling he had turns out nothing happened. Abel thought that it was all because of the two entrance totems that Noswell had called Scarecrow. Abel had named them as Mr. Mountain 2 and 3. It was leaf harvesting time. They had raised the totems with love and affection so they were certain that they would be able to make some high quality leaves. In the chief's residence, the underlings had been waiting for Abel every day but neither the chief nor Abel had come in or out. Noswell asked his underlings to report on Belek's house. The two reported that his sister Gizel had left but Abel was not there. Noswell questioned Abel and Shibi acknowledged their defeat and gave up. When Fyro came out, he saw them three being suspicious. She asked them what were they doing but Noswell started mocking Fyro and dismissed her thoughts. They told Fyro that they were up to nothing but were just waiting for Abel. Fyro replied that Abel had not visited the chief's house for some time. Listening to this the three were startled. The three ran, excusing themselves from Fyro's house. If what Fyro said was true then it was sure that Abel wasn't conspiring with the chief. Noswell still didn't take Abel seriously. 
He considered that all the totems in the field were seasoned lumber by now and Abel must have been hanging his head in defeat. Noswell believed that no one could rival Carlco's house when it came to cultivating leaves. When Fyro saw the kids leaving, she thought that for the eldest son of Carlco's house to linger around her house, Abel had done something. Something strange was going on and his coming-of-age ceremony was around the corner, but Abel was still not behaving that way. Fyro thought it had nothing to do with her so decided to let it go. At Belek's house, Abel's father was smoking a pipe and the leaves felt different when his mother asked how was it. Abel's father replied that it was completely different from what he had smoked until now. Abel who was happy with his harvest and had changed the pot leaves with his harvest was listening to this with a sense of pride, hiding behind the wall. Abel knew it was a success. The preparations were complete and the battleground was the trade market, taking place on the same day as Abel's coming-of-age ceremony. Now the real battle had begun between Noswell and Abel or more like the Carlco family and Abel. It was the day of Abel's coming-of-age ceremony, a significant event in his community. Following tradition, he participated in a ritual involving smoking leaves. As the day progressed, the effects of the leaves began to take their toll, leaving Abel feeling dizzy and fatigued. He made his way to his tent, where he called out to his sister Gizzle for assistance in removing his ceremonial attire, which felt uncomfortably heavy in his current state. Darius and entered the tent seeing them two together, Abel and Gizzle looked like newlyweds. Darius and teased Abel asking him about his wedding ceremony dates but Abel was too tired to join his teasing game. Darius and tried to apprehend the situation and said that it was okay. Darius and wondered where Shibai ran off at such an important time. Abel had forgotten to inform Galeus and that he had sent Shibai to the town market to get a spot. Galeus and was confused about what spot and why. Abel showed him the pack of harvested leaves. Galeasan knew that Abel and Shibai were sneaking around doing stuff but he didn't consider that both the kids would go this far. Galeasan asked for samples, he wanted a taste. Coincidentally he became Abel's first customer. Galeasan tasted it but he had a grim face when he tasted so Abel thought it was bland. But it tastes great and the smell was good too but Galeasan was not good with smoke so he had a grim face. Shibai came running, searching for Abel. Abel asked what had happened. When Shibai went to the town market, he thought he found a great place that wasn't taken. Eske he started preparing but by the time Shibai noticed Noswell had taken another place next to Shibai's place. Abel reassured Shibai that he had chosen the best quality spot but Shibai was still not very sure about it. Abel was excited and couldn't wait to sell, sell everything till they were out. Abel and Shibai's stall must be open since the people were afraid to get in the way of the Karklo family. And for Abel and Shibai, even if they sold the same type of product it was like throwing oil on the fire. Shibai thought there was no way they would get away selling leaves and competing against the Carlco family. Abel tried to calm down Shibai. On the other stall, Noswell had started full advertisement of their products and people were rushing to their store for all kinds of leaves. Ten minutes later, there were no customers at Abel's stall and Shibai started worrying. Abel had a card hidden. He told Gizzle to go and fetch him the totems that he made the other day the red and blue ones Gizzle at once went and fetched them. Shibai asked about the purpose of the totem. It was just a little secret weapon that Abel had made. Noswell visited Abel's shop sarcastically asking Abel for a bundle. He mocked Abel that he would never succeed in mass producing let alone think of it. Noswell had planned to investigate who had helped Abel and Shibai grow their totem plants. Carlco family's incense sticks were made from years of traditions and hone techniques. They were a brand commodity compared to the leaves made by Abel and Shibai. Theirs were on a different level, different tiers. Abel was irritated when Noswell boasted about their family's tradition and technique. Abel questioned Noswell about whether pumping maliceful magic into totems to forceful produce incense leaves was the Carlco family's tradition. Abel knew that Carlco Hajer was supplying crap qualities good and covering bad flavors with their additives were their technique and Abel thought it was just a cheap trick. Noswell told Abel that he was his customer and ordered a bundle of leaves. Abel told him it was one Akali copper for five bundles. When Noswell received his bundle, he dropped all the leaves on the ground crushed it with his feet and called for everyone around. Noswell warned everyone that if anyone brought leaves from Abel then the customers should understand what would happen to them as they were directly fighting with Carlco's family then. Abel was starting to get furious just then Gizzle arrived with the blue red totems. The red totems had a charm to help the sales flourish. The blue totems could draw in customers. In the Noswell stall, the customer was getting tired of waiting due to their slow transaction rate. Shibai started drawing in the customer telling them he had confidence in the flavor of their product and had cut down the price to half as Noswell. 
If Abel and Shibai could draw in a few customers then they would be able to turn the tables. Shibai was surprised that could totems hold such kind of enchantment. Truth be told, it was a magic-based technique. Abel started spurting his knowledge about beckoning a protective object-like thing. Abel was surprised to see such a magic book so he tried it out the magic circle had absolutely no effect but he understood that it may have some hidden power or something that could make it work. Shibai was irritated and started shaking Abel so that he would come to his senses and stop speaking rubbish. Gizel got in the middle of the chaos to save Abel. Garyasan had come to Abel's stall. He asked Abel to sell him enough such that he could have a solid stockpile. Shibai had mixed feelings seeing his father, the test product that Abel had handed to Garyasan. He had shared with a bunch of his known and others and everyone had given them an amazing evaluation and wanted more, they came to the store to purchase the leaves. Everyone considered it to be amazing and unique. People had opinions mostly good ones. The people who tried Abel's leaves thought high materials were far better making the customers think they had just wasted their precious money on moldy stuff for years. Moreover, Abel's product was nice and cheap. People started moving from Noswell's stalls to Abel's now and Noswell couldn't handle it. He started getting furious and started to threaten people about the future consequences. In Abel's stall people were going crazy over their product. Some had ordered 100 bundles, some 200 bundles. People were pushing each other and Abel had to keep on restoring the stock from the storehouse. Fyro had arrived seeing that chaos and asked Abel if she could be of some help to which Abel replied that they could help with keeping the lines organized. Noswell and the underlings were panicking about the situation and were considering dropping their price as well. If they didn't beat Abel's price then they would be in trouble but Noswell's father had told him to keep it at that price no matter what so Noswell couldn't do that. Someone cut through the chaotic line in Abel's stall to come in front. People were screaming at that person but when everyone saw high face they grew silent. The man was the head of the Carlco family Norman Carlco. Norman thought that it was his son Noswell selling the product thus he was praising Noswell for his effort. But when Abel faced him, Abel confronted Norman that he was not Noswell. Norman thought that Noswell had put up Abel to take charge of the store but Norman was mistaken. Abel corrected him saying he was Abel and Noswell was in another stall. When Norman realized the situation, his eyes shrank and he started to look furious. Norman asked Abel if that was the same totem-crazed boy from the Blake family and Abel replied that he was. When Norman heard this he started laughing like crazy and he fainted on the streets. Seeing his father's condition Noswell grew furious. His delicate father was harmed by Abel and his friends and they had to pay for what they had done. Noswell charged Abel with his wants. The chief thought that the Carlco family's head was together with his son double the dunces. Fyro asked the chief if it was best to stop them both but the chief believed that Noswell should know how to hold back so it was probably fine. Fyro doubted her grandfather's opinion. Abel was cautious he wanted the match to be justified as self-defense so he didn't want to move first. Abel was sure with his powers to kill even a bear. He could easily defeat Noswell but Abel shouldn't drop his guard. Noswell charged a magic circle in which he didn't encrypt that formula. Abel thought no matter how he wrote it, the formula should be what it is. Abel thought it was fake but the chief who was witnessing all these knew that Norman was certainly a pretty skilled magician but his son Noswell was a blockhead who hadn't put in any work to hone his skills. A magic tool would only help amplify magic power. Noswell continued to charge and now that it had come to such a situation Abel didn't hold back. Abel cast his magic spell and rose a golden from underneath the ground shadowing Noswell. Noswell started panicking. The magic that Abel had started casting was on a different tier compared to Noswell. Noswell started running around to save himself but Abel was still very conscious. Considering that all this could be Noswell's drama, making Abel believe in him and dropping his guard, Abel would make sure that it wouldn't happen. Noswell started pleading to save him, and that's when Abel realized that all the words Noswell had said back then after cutting Mr. Mountain were all bluffs and Noswell didn't have any kind of super magic power. Ten days later, word of Abel's incense spread throughout the village and the Carlco's incense lead price dropped immensely. The people who were being forced to work, due to the exploitation by the Carlco family had been released. When Abel reached Noswell's house with some items that Abel's father had sent Noswell was shocked to see Abel at the door and asked him to go away and not trouble Carlco's family anymore. Noswell didn't want his father to be hurt again by Abel. Abel felt bad about what had become of the Carlco family. Until now they had unfairly made money without working and Abel hoped that the Carlco family could now work hard in a proper way from now on. Abel tried to indulge Noswell but whenever Noswell saw Abel he would run away. Abel had handed over the managing of the field to Chieftain and he knew that Chieftain could manage it. Abel had gained a fortune selling incense lead. Now, to start a venture he endeavored into research and it looked like everything was fine. 
Darren's village land was difficult to cultivate and for that reason, Produce was expensive so Abel thought of trying to make a tractor to help expand their agricultural capacity. The tractor was almost done. It ran only for a little while but Abel believed it was enough. Emic Cree couldn't handle the stress from the amount of magic power required for the long run time and it stopped the mud run. The tractor still needed more improvements. His creation totem truck was the first step to helping the community, and to be fair it was also a totem. Abel was busy improving the truck while Giz came and asked Abel to join her for a walk as the weather was great. Abel asked her that she should play with her female friends now and then rather than stayed there alone, but Gizzle was satisfied staying and watching Abel. Gizzle had turned 14 and as always, she only interacted with people outside the family if it was needed or as much as she had to. Gizzle was always spending her time by his side. Abel thought if the situation stayed the same until she was an adult then that would be pretty bad. Abel went to his father to talk about something. Abel's father was relieved that Abel had made him a fortune by his leaves and Abel just hoped that his father doesn't become like a second Carlco family. Abel had gone to his father to talk about Gizzle. Abel's father knew that Abel would talk about Gizzle someday when Abel felt like an adult. Abel's father knew that the day had come. Abel knew Gizzle would be an adult in the coming two years and with Gizzle he had been far too close as he was completing his sentence Abel's father cut in asking him when the ceremony was. Abel was shocked, whose ceremony was his father talking about? It was Abel's and Gizzle's marriage ceremony. Abel started defending himself telling him why would they both carry each other, they were brother and sister related by blood. Abel's father, with a look of confusion on his face, informed Abel that it was a long-standing tradition for siblings of the Marin clan to marry once the brother reaches adulthood if they are within five years of each other in age. Abel was stunned and couldn't believe what he had just been told. When Abel's father broke the news to Abel that Abel was going to marry Abel's sister, then he was completely taken aback. His shocked reaction led his father to assume that Abel was against the idea of marrying his sister. However, Abel's feelings were more complicated than just not wanting to marry Gizzle. They both had lived under the same roof as blood-born siblings and now everyone wanted him to marry his little sister. Abel connected the dots at the coming-of-age ceremony when Gianna San had asked Abel about his wedding ceremony. That weird attitude that everyone had at that time was about this wedding. Abel hesitated but explained that his understanding of marriage was that it binds two different families. Even though their parents were blood-born siblings and had married each other his father's shocking revelation left Abel speechless. He couldn't believe what he had just heard. In a moment of impulsiveness and overwhelm, Abel asked his father if, despite the circumstances, they could still marry outside the family. This unexpected turn of events left Abel reeling, unsure of how to process this new information. Abel's father explained that the stronger the bond the stronger the magic power of the offspring would bring. Here Abel had always thought that his father never gave a crap about magic and had always wanted Abel to hunt with just a bow and stuff rather than Abel focusing on his magic but now the scene had suddenly changed. Of course, his father cared because it was an important part of the Marin clan's culture. Abel's father now started realizing that Abel hated the thought of marriage between families, but before this, he had always thought that Abel was doting on Gizzle, not only because Abel thought of her only as a younger sister but more, more than a blood relation, more of lover relationship. Anyways now that Abel was an adult off their Marin clan, Abel had to use that opportunity to become an adult. Abel's father patted Abel's back and left Abel to ponder on his thoughts alone. The next morning knowing this village, its customs, and his annoying father, Abel's family would without a doubt start preparing for Abel's and Gizzle's wedding and Abel thought he needed to prevent that at all costs. Abel thought about Gizzle and did she know about it. Abel was only interested in magic so he had neglected learning about the common sense of the world. Gizzle had only been hanging around him up until now so if Abel didn't know about it then probably Gizzle must be in the same position as him. Noswell knowing Gizzle was his little sister tried to make Gizzle marry Noswell himself. When Abel thought of that he figured that Noswell was probably doing it to spite Abel because Shibai knew Abel's attitude towards the situation. Shibai had been approaching Gizzle so passionately, but Gizzle never humored Shibai. Abel however believed that siblings should never have to marry each other, no matter how attached Gizzle was to Abel. He was sure Gizzle would dislike marrying her big brother. This was where they colluded together and made his father and the others give up. Abel thought it would do. Gizzle who was behind Abel called Abel. She asked whether Abel had again stood up all night. Seeing Gizzle, Abel started panicking. Gizzle told Abel that no matter how well the potions worked she forbade Abel from overworking because she thought his brother had a weak body which she sugarcoated and called Abel delicate. The totem truck was about to be done and Gizzle wanted to be the first one to ride it. 
Abel had just finished the truck a minute ago. Gizzle was happy and proud to see that his brother had settled the problem. Abel could tell that the tractor was good after he changed the original magic ore he used from Emic to Lita now it should be able to keep running for a long time. But before Gizzle could hope on for a ride, Abel stopped her and told them that he had something to talk about with her. Abel thought that Gizzle would probably be surprised by the truth that there's been a lot of talk of Abel and Gizzle getting married. Abel thought hearing this news, Gizzle would be surprised as Abel was last night but Gizzle told him that she was overjoyed and moved. Ten years ago Abel's mother had told Gizzle all about their marriage and since then Gizzle had dreamed of that moment when she would be Abel's wife and be able to name herself as such. Abel's ground for swept from under his feet. He had expected the answer to be something else but the situation had got worse. Gizzle understood that her brother Abel was passionately drawn to magic so she knew that. That passion would change into a strong passion for Abel's future and family and Gizzle had intended to wait for him at that time until the day Abel's heart was ready and to think that the day would come so soon. Gizzle was elated. Abel had no better idea than to escape from there to prevent the topic from getting more awkward so he made an excuse to go to the chieftain's place leaving his test run. Abel to Gizzle that it was not ready after all and needed some fine tuning and he had to check the book storage. Gizzle wanted to tag along but Abel denied telling her that they were going to talk about some business regarding the incense leave and he would take Gizzle the next time for sure. When Gizzle returned home she heard both her parents talking about holding the marriage ceremony in three days. Gizzle was excited to see her dream come true. She had always wanted to marry Abel but her mother felt like Abel wasn't interested in that wedding and she thought Abel had quirks with the thoughts of it. However, his father believed that no matter what, Abel always got swept up with the flow pretty easily, and once the ceremony was over and he would get settled down, then he would adjust to the situation there. Abel had reached the chieftain's house and their chieftain had wanted to consult Abel about the incense lead fields, but Abel was not in a condition to talk about anything and he had to think about some things that had been going on in his head for a little bit and so he asked chieftain if he could wait for a bit with his topic. Chieftain understood him and gave him his space. Abel went and sat in a corner in the house library, stressed and panicking about how he could handle the situation. He had never been bothered with learning the world's customs but due to having learned a set of customs and values from Abel's old world to the people of the world he lived, he bet that he was the only one who held a strange sense of values. In this world he currently lives in, the souls of the dead are turned into a spirit and those spirits are then recycled in the world or so it's believed. The belief was voided due to Abel and the memories he held from his previous life in another world so if he informed about it to someone else, he didn't know how the other party would receive it. For that reason, Abel didn't tell anyone and decided to just live his life there but the drag of the situation came about because he procrastinated in a lot of areas. Abel thought that if he just accepted everything would it settle normally, but he was more worried about Gizzle who was a polar introvert than Abel himself who was a magic nerd. From what Gizzle had said earlier, Gizzle was told all her life that marrying her brother was natural, and if it kept going as it had been, Gizzle would probably have no relationships with anyone other than Abel, that was, something that in the long run would be a bad thing. Abel held his head in frustration, not knowing what to do just then a totem and a paper fell and hit his head from the bookshelf above his head. When Abel opened the page to see the content of the paper, it seemed like it was a map of outside of the village. They had something like that in that library. Abel thought it was the best escape from the situation if he could leave the village, without anyone noticing. If his plan was successful then he did not have to marry his sister and if Abel disappeared then his parents would give up and Gizzle would have to interact with other people. With that idea settled Abel needed to prepare to run away that night itself. He informed the chieftain that he would be borrowing some books and totems from the book storage. The chieftain was okay unless and until he returned it but Abel wasn't sure when he would return it. As Abel was running towards his house he saw Phyro. He wanted to greet her and felt sorry but he was in a rush but when he reached a certain distance Phyro suddenly congratulated Abel on his marriage. Abel stopped listening to Phyro's words. He asked where Phyro heard about it and Phyro replied that she had seen Abel's father going around letting everyone know. Abel thought it was idiotic and his father had intended to trap him. Now he was sure that he needed to get out of the village as soon as possible. Phyro shook her head in confusion. Abel assured her that he was just talking to himself and thanked Firu for looking after him all this time. Saying his goodbye, Abel ran towards her house. Phyro thought that Abel didn't need to say it like it was their final farewell. When Abel reached home, before entering his room he informed everyone that he had planned to delve into some research and not to enter his room for a while. When Abel's father tried to interrupt him, Abel told him that incense leaves were involved and Abel's father changed his behavior, however, he was agitated with Abel. 
However, his father thought that even if Abel was going to shut himself he would just go on to continue preparing for the ceremony then. Giesel tagged along Abel, asking if he needed something to eat or anything else. Abel told her that it was fine and he had something to eat over at the chieftain's place. Abel made an excuse that he was asked to do something time-sensitive so he was in a rush. Giesel understood his situation and just told him to be sure not to collapse from exhaustion midway. After all, Abel had a delicate body. Abel was sorry to worry Giesel but he was thankful that everyone left him alone. It was night and Abel plotted his escape the whole time. He had planned that he would be leaving until he heard the news that Gizel had married or he had married someone. Until then he had no plan to return to the town. Abel was ready for his escape. He raised his wand and ordered totems to carry his books and luggage. Years ago he used to sneak out a lot like that and he wondered whether this sneak out would be the last one. He loaded his tractor with his luggage claimed up himself and initiated the startup. Abel knew that Gizel would probably be angry and wondered will he be allowed to be back at his house. People of the Marin clan as a general rule are forbidden from leaving the village unless they get permission to leave from the chieftain. Abel did not have any idea about what was done to those who broke the rules and those who left the village without a doubt would regret or so had been passed down. He sobbed as he realized that even if he wasn't allowed to return then someday when Giz gets a family he would like to be able to at least watch over her from afar. The next day when he woke up he wondered where he was at that moment. At that speed, he should be coming near to a lake. Laman was much further off than he thought. The city of Lamarn brought in a lot of people for its bustling trading market, and with a bustling trading market a kind of information had also been passed down. Abel wondered if there would be a lot of foreign items, most certainly the magic tools that they couldn't find in the village. Having the thought of a large city, he found the thought to be exciting. Suddenly Totem Truck hit something that caused Abel to bump his head and his journey to stop. Back at home, Abel's father was angry. He hadn't thought that Abel would leave home. Abel had left without even leaving behind a letter. Abel's father was angry about what Abel was thinking. Gizel reassured the worried man, suggesting that Abel might have planned to return or could have gone to test his new totems. She proposed waiting until sunset, at which point they could consider asking the chieftain to organize a search party. Gizel expressed her trust in Abel and her reluctance to cause a big commotion if it turned out. He was simply outside the village. As she spoke, she crumpled up the letter in her hand behind her back, emphasizing her belief that everything would be fine if Abel had ventured beyond the village. 